the big thing about design thinking is it allows people to build on the other the ideas of others instead of instead of just having this one thread you think about it I come up with an idea and then somebody from somewhere else says oh that makes me think we should do this and then we could do that and then you get to a place that you just can't get to in one mind if you follow David Kelly around IDEO you can see how he has infused that thinking into the legendary Palo Alto firm he founded more than 20 years ago breakthrough ideas happen every day here the key to unlocking creativity at IDEO may be their unorthodox approach to problem solving they throw a bunch of people with different backgrounds together in a room. So you're in the business end? Yeah. My background's in software engineering. Journalism. Aerospace engineer. Doctors, opera singers, and anthropologists, for example, and get them to brainstorm. You've got to have a certain culture. You've got to have collaboration. You've got to have diversity. You've got to have an anthropologist and a business person and an engineer and a computer scientist, all of you those kinds it. of... you got it. That's the hard part, is the cultural thing of having a diverse group of people and having them be good at building on each other's ideas. They encourage wild ideas and visualize solutions by making actual prototypes. But the main tenet is empathy for the consumer, figuring out what humans really want by watching them. If you want to improve a piece of software, all you have to do is watch people using it and see when they grimace and then correlate that to where they are in the software and you can fix that, right? And so the thing is to really build empathy, try to understand people through observing them. In other words, their experience will communicate what you need to focus yep, on. Yep, exactly. Right. It's why Steelcase, a company that has been building furniture for 100 years, turned to IDEO to reinvent the classroom chair. This is one of my favorite things. I want you to sit in this oh, chair. Oh, I love this. So really this is for kids, yeah. right? So we well, look. I'm a kid, so yes, there you right. go. You're perfect. <laughs> so when we looked at that old wooden thing with the dog egg yeah, leg yeah, kind of stuff, right. and if you just watch kids and see what they need, what do they need? Well, the main thing they need is a place to put their backpack, yeah. right? So right, you got right. a place to put your backpack. And then they yeah, need it to, right there. they're fidgety. They want to move around, yeah. so you put it on wheels, right? Yeah. And, they, and getting in and out of it, you yeah. know, you need to this. So yeah. it's, it's not rocket science, it's what? It's empathetic. Empathetic. It's empathetic to people. Like really, like try to really understand what they really value. Now they're working with clients all over the globe. They're using the same intuitive human point of view to improve access to safe drinking water in India and Africa, redesigning school systems in Peru, and helping North Face expand their brand into China. My theory is that sometimes life squeezes out the best of us. I've never heard that, but that really resonates with me. So if I could write the first line of your epitaph, it might be David Kelly, help people find the confidence in their creativity. That'd be lovely. And change the world. Yeah.